To kick off the second half of our general session today, I have the honor of introducing our association president and CEO, Darren Kopik. I've had the pleasure of working with Darren for many years during my board service, and I can tell you that we have an outstanding and passionate advocate for our industry in Darren. Darren works tirelessly to promote our industry to regulators, legislators, outside groups, and to tell our story. He and the outstanding team he has assembled do us as members proud as they work to ensure our critical part of the chain is protected. Please help me welcome to the stage, Darren Kopik. Thanks, boss. Appreciate it very much. I have notes, so I'm going to put them over here so I can ignore them. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning, everybody. It's really good to be back in person again, just like it was uh, in San Antonio last year, to see everybody and, and get to visit and catch up on all the stuff that's gone on. I, I tell you, I struggled a little bit with this year's president's report about what I wanted to say because it's been such a crazy, crazy couple of years. But now that we heard Peter's eye on this morning, everything's going to be calm and easy. So I'm feeling much better about that now. Uh, the other reason that I was a little uh, nervous was Corey Rosenbush, my friend at TFI, uh, I know is sitting in the audience with a FFA public speaking scoring form. And so he's going to rate my performance when I get done here. And that always makes me nervous when, when that happens. So um, 30 years of ARA. The first thing I, I thought about when I, when I said, you know, what do we want to talk about this morning? So what I did was I went back to the Fertilizer Solutions magazine 30 years ago, 1992, and tried to see what was it that we were talking about back then, and how has it changed, and how is it the same? And so what you'll see on the screen there is headlines from the Fertilizer Solutions magazine from during the year of 1992, and you'll notice that we're talking about selling profitability, not just products. Same conversation we're having today with a lot of people. The first commercial scale of GMO cotton was out in the field, so that, that's not a, a new thing anymore. Uh, variable rate technology has arrived for the dealers, which was kind of an interesting headline, I thought. Uh, we were still talking about nutrient stewardship, and we're still talking about that today. The, the, some of the terminology and some of the metrics and the machinery are different, but the topic is still very much top of mind, and of course, people. Uh, really big concern for, for our industry even before COVID and magnified by the shortages that we've had during COVID. In the center, you'll see, uh, you probably can't read it from all the way in the back, but that's a tomorrow's management team program from an ARA program in 1992 with uh, a number of speakers and topics that you'll find probably familiar. Uh, one about uh, negotiating with your boss, one about business succession that Dee Willard put on. And so I, I saw Bob last night and mentioned to him that this was gonna be on the slide and Bob said, well, I guess Dee succeeded. <laughs> he handed off the business to us and here we are. So uh, that part worked well. What you see on the very far right is the article from November of, two, of 1992 introducing the merger of NFSA and NARA into the Agricultural Retailers Association, the, a letter from then chairman uh, Tom Hunton and just explaining to the membership, here's what we're doing, here's why we're doing it, uh, this is gonna be uh, an advantageous thing for, for the membership to go through. And I did find uh, uh, several interesting quotes that were pulled from the magazine, and I, I grabbed one. Uh, those of you who know Bill Doyle can probably hear him say this. Forget about market share. We'll all be better off when the dealer focuses on the bottom line. And a lot of truth to that comment. So as we turn to 2022 and the next 30 years for ARA, some of the, feet, the forms, of the forces that are you know, shaping what we do and what our priorities are, Peter talked about the first one this morning, the geopolitics. And so I won't dig into that again because everybody's already scared enough after the first, first section. But it's going to be a huge deal for us for, for fuel, for fertilizer, for trade, for exports of ag commodities, everything. It's going to be a difficult road to hoe. And then you look at technology. So the, the pace of technology is continuing to increase, whether it's the technology that's in the field that you're sharing with growers and sorting through all the stuff out there to give them something that's gonna work, or the technology that you use in your business, in the warehouse, uh, your ERP system, all that stuff is in a constant state of change and the pace is getting faster. And yet growers are gonna be looking to you as retailers to help them sort through what those options are 
and find out what's going to work on their farm. Customers are changing. Not just the demographics and their age and the amount of hair that they have sticking out underneath the baseball cap, but what they want from you, how they want to get it from you. Whether they want an omni-channel relationship where they can price stuff online and then come in to actually make the sale, or whether they want to come in and have a cup of coffee and then decide what, what we're going to do with the back 40 this year, those things are changing. And it's a challenge for all of you to stay on top of that. And then there's markets, commodity markets, fuel markets, all kinds of uncertainty out there that's going to be impacting retailers. And then we have federal policy, which is always predictable, calm, and non-controversial. <laughs> so we're now working with uh, EPA just in the last few months is talking about revisions to the risk management program that will affect ammonia dealers. Uh, some of you may recall the lawsuit that we and TFI did with OSHA about process safety management a few years ago. Uh, OSHA now has a request for information out about process safety management for ammonia dealers. So we've responded to it and hopefully we'll be able to get that taken care of before it gets very far down the track, but they're thinking about it. Uh, the video that we showed this morning talked about the, the work that we've done on, on drivers, on seasonal CDLs and, and the ag exemption, uh, the work that we did on trade. And I'll tell you, you know, working, having, being co-located like we are with CLA and TFI has been really good for a lot of collaboration that we do. I catch up with, with my counterparts in the break room or uh, we get together for meetings on a pretty regular basis. The policy teams for our three shops coordinate together. And it's enabled us to, to really leverage each other's efforts and kind of apportion the workload out to get all the bases covered. But there are some issues where the retailer voice and the retailer priority is different than what the manufacturer priority is. And we certainly had one this year on the issue of countervailing duties on fertilizer imports. And so, uh, you know, we, we took a position on that that was strongly backed by the retail membership. Uh, others had different positions on it. And I'll tell you that, you know, I, we were successful in the end, but we lost a manufacturer member over that issue because we stood up for retailers. And ARA is going to be there for retailers. Our middle name is Retailers. That's who we're going to continue to work for. Uh, Peter didn't mention the, the little tiny issue of our national debt this morning. That's going to be another federal issue that will complicate matters because as the amount of that debt grows and we're paying for, you know, all these things that Washington wants to pay for, and we haven't figured out how we're going to find the money to do that, so we'll just borrow it, there are two big problems that come around. One is interest rates go up, the amount of money that we're spending to finance that debt goes up. And so suddenly we don't have nearly as much money as we wanted for roads and for social security and for all these other priorities. And so what do we do? Run the tab up some more? I mean, eventually that house of cards collapses. The other piece of that, and I, I see Ken Zuckerberg nodding out here in the audience, he's probably gonna hit on this tomorrow. Guess who owns most of the bonds that we sell? China does. We have a really good relationship with China at the moment. And if we get into a, a, an argument about what's going to happen with Taiwan, that's going to be a rather interesting situation to see what they want to do with the bonds that they have and whether they want to buy any more. And so we, we've got ourselves in a pretty difficult spot with that. Now, move from there to the international stage, and you're looking at things like the UN Sustainable Development Goals, and the COP meeting for the Paris uh, Climate Treaty that just happened this past week in Egypt. And I pulled the, the, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals from the UN's website. There are 17 of them there. If you look at them and read them and study them, 10 of those can be tied directly to agriculture. So we're very much in the conversation at those, at those international meetings. Whether we're there personally or not, our industry is being talked about. And uh, several, several groups have been there and engaging. I know IFA in the fertilizer space has been there quite regularly uh, putting the, the fertilizer phase forward. But I want you to look at the, at the adaptation agenda from the COP meeting that was in Sharm El Sheikh a week ago. And this is the, the goal that they're trying to set for global agriculture. 
They want agriculture to increase its productivity by 17%, reduce the farm level greenhouse gas emissions by 21% without putting another acre into production. That's a lot of pressure. But where does all this stuff come together? I mean, I've laid out a bunch of doom and gloom, and Peter said a great, a great foundation for me this morning. Where does this, where does this all come together for you? None of this stuff happens without technology. We cannot increase our production by 17%, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 22% on the same footprint of land without technology. And so it gives us a great opportunity to be able to make that case, to, to show how technology is essential for us to be able to feed the, the, the population of the world going forward, and to drive home the message and the hypocrisy of those who say that we can do it while we're turning back the technology clock 20, 30, 50 years. So it gives us a, a, a lever that we can use to defend and advance our industry. That's important. Secondly, Growers are going to need expert help to figure this stuff out. And you already know that. You're already doing it. But it's going to become even more important for them to be able to go to you and say, of this list of 500 biostimulants that are on the market, how do I figure out what's going to be the one or the two or the 12 that are going to work on my farm the best? And they're going to look to ag retailers to help them do that. So it's a great opportunity for you there, too, as we try to build out that capacity that Peter talked about this morning. Another one that's coming our way is sustainability and traceability systems. Now, I know there's a system in the produce space, in fact, it, oh, well, it's up there, uh, the, the, the Produce Traceability Initiative, PTI. That's a system where within like lettuce and berries and products like that, when they get it fully implemented, they'll be able to trace to the box which store did that box go, go to. to. You know, now now they're, they're, they bring pallets into a distribution center, and the distribution center knows I got this pallet with this barcode, but the boxes that were on that pallet, I don't really know which one of the stores actually got which one. PTI will answer that question for them. And so down to the box of lettuce, they'll know where it went and can quickly trace it back if there's a problem. So my brain immediately goes to, how in the world does this apply to commodity crops? And it doesn't directly. I mean, there's no way you can implement a system like that. You're not going to barcode each kernel of corn or each kernel of wheat to keep track of it. But here's the thing. The companies that are requiring PTI, so Walmart, Kroger, Safeway, Wegmans, I mean, the, the grocers and the, and the consumer packaged food companies, are not going to adopt two systems. And so they're going to want some way to be able to have traceability back in their systems for wheat and flour products and soil oil and corn oil and cornmeal products that make their way to the food shelves. And so what we need to be able to do is to work with them to develop some wrinkle to PTI or something that's like it that is compatible that can satisfy their information needs without being totally impractical at the farm level. And... It, if the retailer can provide that service for the grower, that's another opportunity for you. And the bottom line is that the grower is going to need a strategic partner more than they've ever have. Not just somebody that can sell them stuff, but somebody that can link arms with them and be their strategic partner in the years to come. And I, I think our membership, our ag retailers are really well positioned to do that. So, having thought about all that, ARA went through a strategic planning exercise this summer just to make sure that the organization was positioned in a way to help the members do what you need to do in the next five years. And so here's the result of that work. It's a three-pronged strategy. It's not anything different than what we've done before. It's not radically different. But it reinforces some of the key things that we've done for, since before I came to ARA. So the first one is the strong retailer-focused advocacy. For long before I came to this organization in 2009, this was the most important thing. That, that This is why people join that one and networking like this meeting. And so we're recommitting to make sure that we're, we're doing that, that we're carrying the retail voice on those important issues. Uh, and one of the most important ones has been this rail strike, which we hope, knock on wood, the House will move some legislation on today 
and we'll get hopefully a resolve before this weekend before the, the railroads start pulling ammonia off the rails. But here's, here's the chance for you to play the take home version of the game. On the screen is a QR code or a link, whichever you prefer. And if you point your phone at that QR code, it will take you to our take action page and you can write a letter to your member of Congress right here this morning, encouraging them to pass that piece of legislation. And I'd encourage you to do that, not just because we need more voices in the choir to get that across the finish line, but if you haven't been through that process of using this system to send letters to Congress before, I want you to see how easy it is. The, the letter is written for you. Based on your zip code, it'll find out who your two senators and your representative are. And then you can add some comments if you want to, push send, and off it goes. Probably a 30-second project. And anytime our policy team reaches out to you with a take action alert like that, that's how easy it'll be. And they don't reach out when it's some small, you know, we need to vote on a procedural motion or some, something minor. When Hunter and Richard reach out to ask for help on those letters, it's because we need it. And so uh, please do take a shot at that QR code as we're, as we're going along this morning and, and send your letter into Congress. The one in the middle is inform stakeholders. And we look at stakeholders with a pretty broad view. It's, it's existing members, it's prospective members, it's Congress, it's agencies, it's the public, it's anybody who has a stake in, in the business that we're in, and that's a lot of people. We want them to see ARA as the trusted source of information about anything to do with ag retail and distribution. That they can get what they need from us, when they need it, and that it's reliable and it's timely. And so uh, you see a lot of our, our uh, social media work fits right into that, that, uh, that function. Last one I'll mention is growing and engaged membership. The lifeblood of any, membership, any organization like this one is members. And it's not just a financial equation. Yeah, we need dues income to operate. That's 70% of our income comes from member dues. But we also need members to represent. If we're gonna go to offices in Georgia or Illinois or California or North Dakota, we need to be able to tell them, these are the number of facilities that we represent in your home state and connect them with constituents makes our advocacy much, much more effective. And so uh, we're, we're redoing some efforts and in making some investments as a board to work on, on uh, recruitment of new members. We're also offering services. And there's a whole suite of them that you may not be aware of, but I'll mention a couple. One is a smart payments system that we've launched with KeyBank, which allows people to reduce the amount of money that they spend on merchant fees for accepting credit cards. This was born when I was sitting in the office of one of our California retailers a few years ago and, and asked him the question that you always like to ask, you know, what's, what keeps you up at night? And he said, it's these credit card fees. I'm paying so much to get these things done, and these folks have these cards that earn points, and by the time all the math is done, I'm paying for their family vacation because they're paying for their fertilizer bill with their credit card. And so we went to find a system that would reduce that load. And I'll tell you that the people that have gotten into this system now are saving 20% on what they were spending to, to take credit cards. But it's bigger than that. It's not just the merchant fees savings that are, that are material, but they're also seeing process improvements and digitization within their whole system for accepting card. And the members that are in the program are just as happy with that piece of it as they are with the merchant fees piece. So if you're interested in that, if you don't know about it, KeyBank has a booth in our trade show and I'd encourage you to go look them up. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is the professional development pathway that we have. I constantly hear from members about how people is the, huge, the biggest challenge that we have. And that was, like I say, it's pre-COVID. But it's attracting people, it's developing people, it's showing them the path for the future, keeping them happy and challenged and rewarded for, for uh, staying with your company. And so we have a number of professional development programs that we have out there for you. And rather than me going through and describing every single one, uh, take a look at this video and, and remind yourself about the various programs that are available to you as ARA members.
build on your success by taking advantage of ARA Professional Development Pathway Programs. Designed for ag professionals with all levels of experience, they work to increase employee engagement, talent retention, and even to help your bottom line. These ARA programs are available to anyone, but ARA members get the best rates and are first to know when registration opens. Don't miss your chance with these opportunities. ARA legislative fly-ins are hosted at least once per year to empower members to make their voice heard on Capitol Hill and at U.S. regulatory agencies. Watch the ARA website for details on the next ARA fly-in. The ARA Navigator 360 program is an online leadership assessment tool built just for the ag industry to quantify the gap between individual leadership skills and the leadership the organization needs. Anyone can benefit from this assessment and can work towards sharpening their leadership skills and opportunities. The ARA Rising Stars program is a unique and valuable way to recognize, develop, and reward your organization's top performers and future leaders. This program is sponsored by Atticus. Engage for Ag Leaders provides the tools and training to empower members of the ag retail industry to effectively communicate with consumers and the general public. Sponsored by Corteva AgriScience, this program is designed for all employees from sales and communication staff to top executives. Take your career to the next level with the ARA Management Academy. Sponsored by the Purdue University Center for Food and Agricultural Business, managers, leaders, agronomists, and salespeople will find value in this program as they share ideas and identify new tools, opportunities, and best practices in the ag retail industry. Get the insights needed to deal with sustainability issues and concerns by participating in SPARC, Sustainability Programming for Ag Retailers and Certified Crop Consultants. With this effort, program partners including ARA provide the online learning modules and field resources needed to help start or grow a sustainability program that meets the needs of your farmer customers. Support for this program comes from the Midwest Row Crop Collaborative. Responsible Ag Auditor Training is another way to bring more value to your business and your customers. This training for Ag professionals will give you the tools needed to become a certified auditor to ensure the safe storage and handling of fertilizer products at responsible Ag facilities. ARA webinars are a way to give your team a competitive advantage in the year ahead. Industry-specific topics on up-to-the-minute issues give you an opportunity to gain insights and post questions directly to subject matter experts and then get the answers you need in real time. Build connections and sharpen skills with leadership at its best, a program sponsored by Syngenta for emerging leaders in ag retail. You'll improve communication skills and gain experiences that will help you lead and meet future challenges. This program includes training time in both Raleigh, North Carolina and Washington, D.C. In 2022 and beyond, you can count on ARA's Professional Development Pathway programs to help you climb higher and achieve more in ag retail. So there's a lot there. If you need to find out more, if you say, I saw something, but I can't remember what the details were, there's a whole section on our website for Professional Development Pathway. And it's very easy to find, but if you can't find it, Send me an email, contact Donnie Taylor. Either one of us will point you in the right direction to find and utilize those programs. Let me pull back the curtain a little bit here on just one of them. You like the animation? Mm -hmm. So this is a, a chart printout from the Navigator 360 program that, that was mentioned in the video. This is available to ARA members and it's $200 a person. Unbelievable value. But what this chart shows you, this is just a random sample of data, is the green is where an, an individual filling out the, the, the survey or the evaluation would rate themselves on a number of different skill levels or skill dimensions, if you will. How do I do about uh, getting the job done no matter what, you know, or whatever the question is. And so the green is how they see themselves. And then there are others that are interviewed that contribute to the assessment who give their opinions about how the person does on each one of those dimensions. And that's what you see in the black line. So if the green chart and the black line match, 
That means that the employee's perception of themselves and others' perceptions of themselves on that skill is roughly the same. But if you see one where the green is way outside of the black and the person thinks they're way better at it than everybody else does, that's a training opportunity. Flip side of that is that if there's one where somebody thinks they're not doing really well but the black line's way outside and everybody else thinks they're kicking it out of the park, that's an opportunity to sit down with that person and say, you're doing better at this than you think you are, and coach them up. So you can get the data this way, you can get the data in a numeric kind of a heat map format with the same kind of conclusions. And so, like I say, for 200 bucks a person, you can do this for individuals, you can do it for your whole team and get a consolidated report back that shows the, the, you know, the whole team and the manager and, and so forth. But uh, find Donnie if you have questions about that. I know New View's got some people in the, in the audience too. Look, check out that program and, and uh, see if you can put that to work in your business. So we talked a lot about teams. There we go. We could not do this without our ARA team. And I, you, I say this every year, and every year I'm more impressed by how creative and how energetic and resourceful they are to get all the stuff done. You see two posts up there who are vacant. So we have two, two positions that we're trying to hire right now in the DC personnel market is just difficult to find the right person to get them in the right seat. And so what is a heavy lift for eight staff members in a normal year, accomplishing the mission and getting this conference done, is a really heavy lift with only six people. And I cannot tell you how proud I am of the team that we have and the efforts that they've made to make this work, to be creative, to bring in some outside help where needed, to just do what needs to be done to make it happen this year. And so I want you to join me in thanking the ARA staff team, if you would. Now we have one specific uh, anniversary this year, a, a 10 year mark. Somebody who's been with us for 10 years as of today. Uh, Donnie Taylor came to us from totally a commercial background, several different roles with pesticide companies. Uh, this is a, a picture that his wife gave me. So I, I really appreciate Lisa for sending that over. He, he may want to explain the history of the picture. I'll let him do that if he wants to. But Donnie loves retailers. Uh, he's passionate about your business. He, he goes 10 extra miles to make sure that we get the services done and the, the stuff done that we need to do for retailers. And so he's been a tremendous addition to the team, not just because of his membership and sponsorship abilities, but also for internal process improvements on hiring and other things that we've benefited from within the ARA team. And so I want to invite Donnie up and present to him a token of our appreciation, and I'd ask you to share yours with him as well as he comes up. Donnie? It's not a fancy package, but I hope you like what's inside. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, that picture was from uh, an ag tour we did in France with the Brazilians as well. So that was in a champagne wine cave, and our host decided to decorate me and take my picture. So uh, they were very proud of that. Obviously, my wife Lisa is as well. I just want to thank you all for the opportunity to work for the most important cog in the supply chain, the American retailer. So thank you so much. All right. Thanks, sir. All right. Well, as I wrap up here, it's hard to believe that it's been 13 years since I joined this organization. Uh, I once told people that if I lived my entire career in agriculture and never lived in Washington, D.C., it would be a success. And three years later, I was in Washington, D.C. So, you know, never say never. Uh, but it's been a terrific run. I've had wonderful people to work with and a fun people to work for. And I'm looking forward to the next 30 years with ARA. I appreciate your support and your membership. Thank you very much.